is Ryan here, aka Archadow87, and this is my first episode in my new series called Ryan's Film Analysis, where I'm going to be analyzing films that are complex. Sometimes they're films that leave you hanging, kind of like, what the heck was that supposed to mean? And through my own research, I don't have any other sources, no commentaries, no other filmmakers' opinions, just my um, research alone and the film. I'm going to be giving to you my theories. And I've been working on this film, Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, for the last week or so, trying to dig into it and try to get some little meanings that you could, you could only get if you actually carefully look at the film. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Eyes Wide Shut is Stanley Kubrick's last movie. It stars Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. When the movie came out, like any other Stanley Kubrick movie, the critics either loved it or hated it. And people went into the movie thinking it was going to be some like basic instinct, and they were very disappointed because that's not what they got. Um, what they got was is basically a marriage in crisis story, and kind of like a dreamlike odyssey through despair. And so I hope you enjoy this. The first thing that we're going to look at is um, Doctor Hartford, played by Tom Cruise, and his marriage to his wife, and how their marriage right now. You know, it's not really on fire. It's more of routine. And from what this scene shows behind us, this is a scene they're getting ready to go to a party. And she just asked him, um, how do I look? And he continued to look in the mirror at himself. And he said, you look great. And she notices that he wasn't even looking. And so that just begins to show you, it's, this is the beginning of the movie, it sets up their relationship. You know, they're married and they have a child but it's all out of routine. There's no real, you know, emotional love. And, you know, he has this thing where he loves, I guess, thinking that his marriage is perfect. And Stanley Kubrick is smart. He outlines their house with all these beautiful paintings. And it's supposed to be kind of like a subliminal message that they are living in their own little perfect world. And, you know, the bookshelves. And I just think it's, it's too coincidence that Stanley Kubrick had beautiful paintings surrounding the house. It was kind of like Tom Cruise's little sanctuary of perfection. If you just saw that scene behind you, that's New York. And they're at a party now of their friend. Um, and, you know, everybody's just kind of living that lifestyle, you know, the perfection. And, you know, everybody has money. And they're just living life without any real reason. You know, there's a scene coming up where Nicole Kidman mentions that they get invited to this party every year. And, you know, so Tom Cruise's character, he's, he's rich. He has everything. He has a wife, a child, a beautiful home. Everything is great. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you saw the scene before this, you saw this, you know, we showed the city of uh, New York. Well, it looked like London, like an upscale London thing. But later in the film, it looks trashy. And we think that after um, Dr. Hartford finally opens up his eyes to the fact that his life isn't perfect, that it's like us, the viewers, realize that too. And our sit the city is transformed into this vile, uh, just sin-filled city. And it looks completely different. Kubrick was a very detailed director. All the little details, you know, were, you know, they had everything has a meaning in his films. And some people say this film starts out very slow, but really every frame has to do with something. This scene right here, Tom Cruise notices a guy who um, he went to med school with. And this guy is what is kind of like a, a door into an escape that Tom Cruise goes into um, later in the film. At the same party behind us, we have Tom Cruise. He's separated from his wife, and he's actually give, he's not having an affair or you know hitting on these girls, but he's actually being more flirtatious and affectionate that the, to these two women that just I guess showed up at the party than he is to his own wife, and that's very interesting because in a second we'll show that Nicole Kidman kind of does the same thing to another man. So that just shows that their emotional connection isn't as it should be as a married couple. Right here you see Nicole Kidman, who was left alone by her husband. He said he was going to go to the bar, when really, he, on the way to the bar, he met those two girls. And 
suddenly she found herself in the arms of another man, and, you know, he's trying to hit on her, but she knows she's married. She doesn't give in to that, but it still shows the fact that there's some kind of, there's something wrong with their marriage. Um, I think it's either the night of the party, I think it's actually the day after, the night after the party, um, they decide to get a little intoxicated, and him and his wife are in the bedroom, which you notice is lightly lit. Um, you know, everything is still perfect in his eyes and his life. The bedroom lights are still normally lit. And, you know, they're having a conversation about, you know, attra you know, jealousy and stuff. And she notices that he was with two girls and then he brings up the guy. They get in this argument because he makes a statement that she kind of takes as, oh, I'm not... You don't think I could, you know, make another man happy, you know, that kind of thing. And he, he didn't mean to do it, but he kind of made her feel like she wasn't, she didn't have any worth. And that females in general didn't have any worth. And so she is livid. And so she begins to vent about how there has been, there, there, there are men that like her. You know, she's a beautiful woman. And she tells a story about a, a, from a, a year from this point um, ago, she met this man, or she didn't meet him. She saw this guy at some hotel that they were at, and he was a military guy, and she, she was so attracted to him. She had another run-in with him, and they almost slept together. They didn't. She didn't have an affair with him, but she held back. But you know, this is the part of the movie where she confesses this, and as you can see behind me. Tom Cruise goes from being a happy-go-lucky doctor throughout the other part of the movie to saying, wait a second. How can my perfect life, my perfect wife, everything just turn upside down on me like this? And jealousy starts to build in him. Take a quick look at this segment of the movie. If you notice, there's this blue tint of a color behind Nicole Kidman. This is the part of the scene where she's actually venting to him about her... Um, desires and later in the movie this color pops up but in my opinion this color and this tint represents um, hurt darkness and pit, like despair so let's just go ahead and call this light despair she is bringing with this story despair into the bedroom and into the mind of Dr. Hartford and it's not her fault. It's really his fault for allowing that to happen because of the way he's letting the marriage be. So I'm going to be showing you a lot of other clips where this color has a lot of meaning. Um, he left. He got a call. And he is now pretty much kind of replaying that whole conversation in his head. And as you can see, he, his perfect life, you know, living in you know, luxury cars and everything. He has now resorted to driving around in a taxi in an ugly, not elegant, London-like, and kind of like a normal, dis dis not nice as um, before kind of town. And he begins to kind of replay the dream, like a dream of his wife actually having an affair. And as you can see, he starts thinking of that. And this is a shot, which is the same blue tint that I was telling you about before. And, you know, she's having, this is him dreaming of her having an affair. As you can see in this shot, um, this is just another exterior shot of the city. But compared to the scene that we saw earlier in the film, this seems a lot more low scale. And I know there's different parts of the cities, and that's how it is in every city. But I think that Kubrick used this to his advantage to have kind of show how he just dives off in the deep end and he decides to go into an uglier part of the town. Now he's walking down the street. Look at his face. He's still thinking. And you see how the bluish tint has started to kind of overcome him and surround him. And let me press play. He's angry. And he's seeing in the 
that his life wasn't as perfect as it was. And now you see a little group of hoodlums coming up and just check this out. His life is not as perfect as he thought it was. Okay. So his friend that played the piano at the party, the one that I was showing you and talking, like I showed you earlier, he is involved in some secret society crap. And throughout Tom Cruise's little odyssey after he left his house, he meets up with his friend and his friend talks about this thing he has to do. And Tom Cruise kind of feels, you know, the mystery behind it. And so he kind of follows him to this place. And there's this huge religious type um, cult performance going on with like chants and really kind of in my opinion um, paganistic type stuff I don't even know if paganistic is even a word but you know paganism vile cult religious thing and he's busted but throughout the entire scene that bluish tint is either shining on his head or the colors of some of the cloaks around him, or even the lighting of the room. And that just shows the despair that he's in. He was able to go back home. Some woman um, that had a mask on, you know, sacrificed herself. You don't really know if she was going to die or whatever. But they were really serious. When he got busted, they kind of threatened him with life. You know, like, you're, you broke... Uh, you don't, you're not supposed to break into these kind of things. And so now he's worried that he may have gotten some girl killed because of that. But his marriage is still on the rocks, and there is no passion in his marriage. The despair is still in his life. And he went home to be with his wife. And as you can see, their bedroom is no longer that nice lit color anymore. Yes, you could say that it's because they're trying to go to sleep and the lamps are off but instead of showing a pitch black room Kubrick uses his bluish despair symbol again and since Dr. Hartford allowed all that into their relationship this is what their bedroom is like it's despair, emotionless and there's nothing to it Okay, so now it's the ne a next day, a day later, and he just wants to find out if that, if that, what happens to that girl. What happened that night? So now he goes back and he makes his way to his friend Ziegler's house, played by Sidney Pollock, and that's the same guy who threw a party at the beginning of the movie. And in the course of this meeting, you know, Tom Cruise, he's really there just to kind of tell him what's going on and you know all that kind of stuff but Ziegler called him and asked him to come over so Tom Cruise figured it'd be good just to share something with a friend well it turns out that Ziegler was at that exact same uh, cult party and knows exactly what happened and in fact tells Tom Cruise's character that all that death and the girl disappearing and all that kind of stuff was just an exaggeration of Tom Cruise's mind. He finds out that the girl did die, but it was from a drug overdose, and it didn't even happen at that little get-together. And in fact, the girl that saved him, Tom Cruise met at that party that was at the beginning of the movie. And so it's just a big exaggeration on Tom Cruise's mind because of everything that's going on with his wife. And... It's just the result of his reality and his perfect life crashing down on him. And this is the final scene of the movie. It shows Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and their daughter going Christmas shopping. And notice how chaotic it is and how... Um, I always compare this scene to the scene at the beginning of the movie at the dance. Like when they're dancing, they're kind of waltzing through life in the perfection of a dance. And now that... Um, their eyes are open to their marriage and that there's some things that need to be worked out. It's turned in, they're now at the end of the movie at a place where 
People are going zigzagging across shopping. It's chaotic. They're acknowledging that life can be chaotic. And in the midst of all that, they are finally stopping in the middle of all life and acknowledging that there's a problem. And they are talking about it. And they try to work things out. And Tom Cruise is like, all right, what do we need to do? What can I do? And she's like, well, I don't know. But there is one thing that she knows that they need to do. And that is be intimate. And so the famous last line of this movie, which I'm not going to say on this video because um, I'm trying not to be suggestive in anything, but it's basically let's screw. And that's how the movie ends. And that's how it is. But some people dismiss that ending as kind of a, what? Like, Kubrick's just trying to be kind of dirty. Well, no, he's not. He's trying to get this couple and show us that this couple needs to get back to its roots. They need to be intimate. They need to share that intimacy and fall back in love again to where no more despair, no more of these blue shadows in their life. No more of these chaotic dreams and jealousies. And that there can be a reconciliation. But guys, thank you so much for listening to my interpretation of Eyes Wide Shut. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. If you have another theory, just go ahead and put it in the comments box. This was fun. This was awesome. Um, this is my paper that I did all the research on and I typed it out. And I'm just going to add it to a notebook, and I'm going to continue to do this with film. If so, give me your ideas of what you thought of it. And until next time, this is R. Chadway 87, a.k.a. Ryan. I'll see you later.